I like playing games. I do. I like board games. I like card games. I think I dislike it because there's these finite rules and it's with friends and family so I'm enjoying myself and socializing and all that. But what I found about games is, you know, they come in two different ways. Games like board games and card games and games in the field of play and so forth have these finite sets of rules and then we can play these games in infinite ways and that's the cool part you know and it's it's fun watching our favorite sports teams play their game and watch it how it changes over time with different players and so forth and you know a lot of times we're playing our own games in life um, you know I've mentioned before about in the money world we look at are you in the get rich game or are you in the stay rich game maybe you don't look at it that way but it's important to understand where you are are you gathering money or are you starting to distribute money and so forth. What I find interesting about games is that it happens everywhere. You know, in science, there's some finite things such as gravity here on Earth. It's, we know what that is. But then there's some other ways to look at finite or infinite ways, for instance, in energy. You know, it's a contentious subject out there. And, you know, and it started three centuries ago. You know, in 1712, basically, steam engine took place and it started with uh, basically pumping water out of these coal uh, mines in the English countryside and that helped them to get more coal out of, the, out of the ground to then of course heat their homes and everything else and at that time there were some French aristocrats called the physiocrats and they absolutely did not believe whatsoever in any kind of industrial revolution enterprises and they said value is only in land there was no other value and of course about 50 years later, they were disproved, and we started to agree that these new businesses, these new enterprises really had value. So it wasn't that the physiocrats were necessarily wrong about their thinking or right. It wasn't that they were wrong in what they thought the future was going to be. They basically had this very finite mindset, and so they didn't really look at value in an infinite way and how value could be produced by this new industrial revolution, as an example. And I find myself sometimes on this finite side versus this infinite side and not being clear about where I'm at. So, you know, I like the fact that it's finite with my surgeon or my airline pilot uh, or my car, my vehicle, that these things actually work the way they're going to, going to work. Why? Because if they don't, I'm dead. You know, this is, this is a problem here. But I do want to make sure my surgeon has some infinite ways of making sure he does or she does the surgery appropriately and the pilots do the right things when things happen uh, and drivers on the road do the right things in infinite ways about that. So we're always playing with these two opposing, it seems like opposing forces of fi finality, or finite things, infinite things. And what I've seen that it, it starts you know, kind of when we're kids, you know, they don't know any better. They look at the world primarily in an infinite standpoint. It's, I love watching them go through not accepting the norms that we do as adults. And you know what? Then one of those kids, young children, 10, 20 years later, becomes an Einstein, where they're proving the laws of relativity that for 250 years, uh, Newtonian physics said gravity was defined a certain way. And this poor Einstein fellow for a good 20, 30 years was being scoffed at and looked at as being, you know, totally wrong in his assumption about how it could be different than it was because he had an infinite way of thinking about it. He never lost that feeling of that childhood wonderment about life in an infinite way, although he lives in a finite world. So it's, we're tackling this finite versus infinite all the time and a lot of it has to do with failure as adults. We just don't like failure, plain and simple. And when you start playing a lot of infinite games, there's lots of failure that takes place. So you try not to go there as much as you can, but you realize that if you just stay finite all the time, it's not real exciting. Everything stays exactly the same. But if you do too much infinite, it's too chaotic and it can make life miserable for you and others around you. So there's this balance between these two sides. Uh, not to be too finite, not to be too infinite, 
And I think it's just a good way to maybe step back and look where you are in life, no matter where you are, to determine how you play with these two spectrums, especially when it comes to your money and your family and your legacy, because those things will have some finality about them, but they also have a lot of infinite things about how you play that game in the long run.